morning. Good morning. Good morning. Happy Friday, everybody. This is the day that the Lord hath made and we will rejoice. Be exceedingly glad in it because God is good and he is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. Hallelujah. Good day today. Uh, take that opportunity right now to set your thermostat and, uh, you know, make a decision right now that I'm going to have a great day today, that this is going to be a good day today. You know, you have some things to face. We all do. But, you know, you face them with the joy of the Lord and you face them with belief in the word of God and you face them. Amen. You stand up and you face them and you do what you have to do and all is well. Amen. Amen. Let's send some blessings out this morning. Let's see where you're coming in from. Detroit, Michigan, uh, Maryland. We send blessings to you guys today. South Africa. We send blessings to all of you guys today in Canada, Louisiana. God bless you this morning, this evening, this afternoon, all over California. Praise God. Carrollton, Georgia is in the house this morning. We send blessings to Oklahoma, Tennessee, Utah, London, Akron, Ohio, College Park, Georgia, yay, Abuja, Nigeria. We send blessings to you. Uh, somebody's on an airplane, 757. <laughs> Praise God. Um, we send blessings to you guys. That's amazing to me. People are moving across the airways and they're they're, they're logged in on our daily confession. That's a blessing of the Lord. Rock Mart, Georgia. Yeah. Maryland, praise God. Uh, we send blessings to you guys today in North Carolina, all over Nigeria. Praise God. Ozark, Arkansas, Hampton, Georgia, Burlington, North Carolina, Savannah, Fayetteville, North Carolina, Praise God, all is well. It is good. Plains, Georgia, Monroe, New York, Germany is in the house with us this morning. We send blessings to you. Uh, BC, Canada. Yeah, you're blessed today. We say you're blessed. New Jersey, we say you are blessed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, you're blessed. Albany, New York. We send blessings to those of you in Australia, Western Australia. And uh, we declare the blessings of the Lord in on your life. Minnesota, Sacramento, California, Rhode Island. We send blessings to you guys. Texas, praise the Lord. Arlington, Virginia. We send blessings to you guys. That's right. You are blessed, Sheila. You're blessed in the name of Jesus. Uh, Mumbai in India. We send blessings to you guys in Jesus' name. And uh, we just thank God is, 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 is good. He's good to you. And um, we just, we, you know, it doesn't take but a spark to start a fire. And I mean to tell you, I believe each of you have a spark in you. And this gospel of grace can be shared and ministered to people. Uh, Guyana, we send blessings to you. Uh, today and uh, we just thank God for what's happening and we send blessings to Jamaica this morning yeah God is so good he is good amen we send blessings to the world changers nation uh, all over this world we send blessings to you guys thank you so much for all that you do and that you've accepted and walk in this ministry and made the vision your own. We send blessings to Saudi Arabia this morning. We send those blessings to you guys in Baltimore. Um, thank God, yeah, we're all working on those emotions, but more better than that, we're trusting God to do it. Yeah, I mean, you know, he does things that we don't, we don't even understand, man. And I'm just grateful that I can trust him to dig deep into our lives and make the change and make the difference and change our desires and, and all that. Um, so yeah, so all of you are blessed today. We're thankful and grateful for you today in the name of Jesus. Um, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, 
I, I, I am believing, you know, that uh, you're growing. I'm believing that you're learning uh, and that you're growing and that these daily confessions are making a difference in your life. And I mean, that's what moves me. I mean, it moves me to know that, well, praise God, somebody's getting some out of this, somebody's growing. And um, it's a blessing of the Lord to be able to do this. Um, so amen. Thank you so much uh, for your prayers and, you know, just being hooked in here with us today. Today, we're going to continue to talk about emotions. We're going to end this week up with that. Um, and so let's go ahead and get Psalms 91 equipped. And then we're going to show you how to how to master your emotions and um, hang on to what I gave you yesterday and then join us on Wednesday nights as we we uh, break it down into, into bite sized pieces for you. Amen. All right. Repeat after me. I will dwell in the shelter of the most high God. I will find rest in the shadow of the almighty. God is my refuge and my fortress. You are my God in whom I trust and with great confidence in whom I will rely. God will rescue me from every trap and protect me from every disease. I am covered and protected by his outstretched arms. God's faithful promises are my armor and my protection. I will not be afraid of the terrors of the night, nor of the arrows that fly in the day. I will not dread any disease that stalks in the darkness, nor any disaster that strikes at midday, because God is my refuge and the almighty God of my home. No evil can befall me and no plague can come near my dwelling. God has ordered his angels to guard, defend, and protect me in my house. God's armies of heaven will keep me from falling. I will walk unharmed and kick anything that is evil from my path. Because of God's love for me, I will call upon him. He will set me above all my troubles. He will deliver me from all my fears and he will honor me with his presence and power. He will reward me with long life and he will show me his salvation. In Jesus name, I declare that I am Psalms 91 equipped and all is well with me and my house. In the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, Amen and Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Uh, I want to start off with something here in Proverbs chapter 16. You want to get a pad today, Proverbs 16. And I'll try not to run over time this week, this uh this today, but Proverbs 16 and 32. He says, uh, he that is slow to anger is better than the mighty. And he that ruleth his spirit is better than he that taketh a city. Wow. The uh, Amplified Bible says, he who is a slow to anger is better than the mighty. He who rules his own spirit uh, uh, is mightier than he that takes a whole city. So basically what he is saying here is that a man who can control or master his emotions is more powerful than any army that takes a city. That's that's wild, isn't it? A man who can control his emotions is more powerful than an army that takes a city. Now, in contrast, the person who is under control of his emotions is like a person overtaken by an army. So a person who is under the control of his emotions, in other words, your emotion is you, you allow your emotions to be the engine that leads the, the, the train. If you are under the control of your emotion, you're like a person being overtaken by an army. 
So let's just have a little short review right quick. First of all, you can take control of your emotions. You have authority over your emotions. Secondly, self-control, it is a, a godly force. And self-control, believe it or not, is designed by God to direct our lives where he has designed uh, them to go. God has designed our life to go to a certain place. And, you know, I believe self-control is a gift from God. It's a godly force and uh, is something that we, we can tap into by the help of the Holy Spirit. And then uncontrolled and unyielding emotions, uncontrolled, you ever had an uncontrolled or unyielding emotions, they lead to controlling the wrong thing, people. So when you can't control your emotions, uh, then you'll try to control somebody else. And God never created us to try to control somebody else. Okay. So let's give again a definition for emotions. Emotions are feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure, trying to move us in a certain direction. Their feelings on the inside caused by pain or pleasure, trying to move us in a certain direction. Now, here's something that some people may find shocking. Jesus had emotions. Yeah, Jesus had emotions. His emotions did not have him, but Jesus had emotions. Uh, there were times of great temptations that that showed up in, in his life. Uh, let me read uh, a couple of things to you. If you'll go over to Hebrews um chapter 4 and 15 let's flip over there for a moment because it, it's a big deal just to know that jesus was a demonstration of how we should live our lives on the planet and he had emotions and those emotions did not have him so let's check out how how he dealt with it but let me read this to you first uh hebrews 4 and verse 15 he says for we have not a high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. The Amplified says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to understand and sympathize and have a shared feeling with our weaknesses and infirmities and liabilities to the assaults of temptation, but one who has been tempted in every respect as we are yet without sin. And so Jesus had emotions. Those emotions did not have him. And we have a savior, a high priest who's touched with the feelings of our infirmities. He knows about this battle with the emotions. In fact, let's, let's look at one of those right now. Now, this is pretty, pretty awesome. Matthew chapter 14, and I'm going to read it out of the Amplified so you can get the, the effect of it. I'm going to actually show you these emotions uh, trying their best to uh, get the lead and, 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 and govern the life of Jesus. Uh, Matthew chapter 14, and let's look at verse 33. Uh, let's see. Yeah, let me say 33 and those in the boat. Matthew 14 and verse 33. Now watch this. He says, and those in the boat knelt and worshiped him saying, truly, you are the son of God. Uh, let's see. Where am I? Excuse me. I'm in the wrong book. Mark. Because I thought, well, that ain't what I want. Mark chapter 14 and verse 33. Sorry, Mark chapter 14. I'm talking about emotions this morning. How to master emotions. Mark chapter 14 and verse 33. And I'm going to read it out of the Amplified. Yeah, there we go. All right. Uh, so this is Jesus in the Gethsemane. Back up. Let's read it at verse 32. Then they went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, sit down here while, while I pray. Now watch this. And he took him 
and he took with him Peter and James and John and began to be struck, talking about Jesus now, was struck with terror and amazement and Jesus deeply troubled and Jesus depressed. What? Verse 34. And he said to them, my soul, that's that soul is where your mind, will and emotions reside. And he said, my soul is exceedingly sad, overwhelmed with grief so that it almost kills me. Remain here and keep awake and be watching. I mean, he began to sweat blood because the stress was so heavy on him. Verse 35 and going a little farther. All right. So notice what was happening while his emotions was trying to attack, to attack him. He was struck with terror, amazement, deeply troubled, depressed. His soul was overwhelmed with grief. Okay. Uh, but look what he did. He went forward a little bit and he fell on the ground and he kept praying. All right. Now let's, let's, let's look at this now. So Jesus had emotions. We see in the garden of Gethsemane where he's preparing to be whipped with a cat of nine tails. He's preparing to be crucified on the cross. He's preparing to go to hell for you and for me. And uh, my soul is exceedingly sad. That's, that's a, that's emo emotions right there. Okay. So how did Jesus handle it? Let's see. How did Jesus handle it? Um, he did not allow his emotions to determine his, his, uh, his decisions. See, he was not going to make an emotional decision and say, oh, God, I don't want to do this. So he did not allow his emotions to determine his decisions. He knew God wanted him to go to the cross. But his feelings tried to move him in a different direction. He knew God wanted him to go to the cross, but his feelings tried to move him in a, in a different direction. Have you ever had in your life you knew God wanted you to do something, but your emotions and your feelings we're working to try to move you in a different direction. Okay. Uh, and then verse 35 says, uh, he went forward just a little and he prayed. So what do you do in, in, when you're on, the, when your emotions are trying to attack you and try to get you to change directions, you take a step forward in the will of God that you know you should be going and you keep on praying. Those are the two things you do. To, 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 to have authority over your emotions. When your emotions are under attack, you see Jesus is under attack in his emotions. He went forward a little and he kept praying. Wow. He went forward a little and he kept praying. You don't have to go forward a lot. Just, just keep, just go forward a little. Just go forward a little. Hallelujah. And keep praying. So while our emotions will often try to influence and determine the decisions we make, we must do what Jesus did. He went forward, number one, keep going in the direction that you know God wants you to go, no matter how you feel. Keep doing what you know God wants you to do, no matter how you feel. Keep staying with the word, no matter how you feel. That's the first thing. And then number two, he kept praying. Talk to God when you feel struck with the, with your emotions, okay? When you feel struck with fear, discouragement, depression, pray through it. Pray through it. Emotions are high, anger, hurt, pray through it. That's when you talk to God. That's who you're dependent on. Praise God. That's when you're dependent on. So how we deal with our emotions will determine whether we experience the blessing or the curse in life. They both are here, but our emotions and how we deal with them will determine, are we being moved towards where the blessings are or are we move, being moved towards where the curse is? The ultimate curse that, that came into the world when Adam sinned, listen to this, the ultimate curse that came into the world when Adam sinned was the curse of being emotionally ruled. A lot of people don't see that in the garden. But that was the curse, the curse of being emotionally rude, an emotionally rude person. Now, this doesn't mean it's a curse to have emotions. That's not what I'm saying. We just need to make sure that those emotions don't have us. We need to make sure those emotions don't have 
us, praise God. We're all tempted to be swept away by feelings that come from the appearance of things rather than the substance of it. And as with Adam and Eve, something, something may look good to the eye, uh, but doesn't necessarily mean you should, should partake of it. It looks like it'll, it'll, it'll make you wise, you know, to them. It looked like it would, it, it would, it, it would make them smarter than what they were and appeals to their physical and emotional appetites or need, but it can kill you. That's what, that's what I mean by the curse of being emotionally rude. You don't want to allow your emotions to move you in a direction where it just messes your life up. So there, there are three factors here in making successful decisions versus emotional decisions. All right. Three factors, three things we need to know uh, in order to make successful decisions and not make, watch this, emotional decisions. Now, yesterday we talked about uh, emotional maturity and, and, and these three factors are also going to determine that as well. But number one, accurate knowledge. My people are destroyed because of lack of knowledge. They, they just, this is what they don't know. It's accurate knowledge about God, about his word, you know, how you see God and the thing that you, when you don't, when you, when you don't believe God and, and you don't know God, if, in other words, if you think God is a killer, then every, everything about your belief with God is going to, going to be based on that wrong thinking. So accurate knowledge is going to help you to make a successful decision versus an emotional decision. Number two, wisdom or wise counsel. Okay. That's going to help you to make successful decisions. Best counsel from God's word, from godly people who have, who have been there. So, you know, God's word offers counsel and godly people who have actually gone through what you've gone through. You know, that that's that's a way you can make successful decisions. Don't be afraid to listen to people who have already gone through what you've gone through. And then number three, understand the process necessary to achieve the the desired goal in your life. You want a great marriage. You want then to understand the process of that great marriage. And and so this is so, so very important for you to understand. OK. Many problems in your marriage, your finances, your health are related to your emotions. Let's just be honest. And um, man, I don't know about you, but, you know, Taff and I, are, we are learning about our emotions uh, because, you know, they're they're there and they're involved in your marriage and they're involved in a lot of things. So we need to we don't need to act like we don't have emotions. We, we just got to learn the wisdom behind it, you know. Emotions can play a major role in in, in um, releasing some good things and it can play a major role in releasing some bad things. I mean, bad things like depression and anxiety and stress and uh, that'll lead to physical sickness and disease or chemical imbalances. Your emotions are the source of, of sin in your life as well. Yeah. Once, we, once we've been born again, we're free from the power of sin, but the degree that we gain control over our emotions, it is to that degree that we will walk free from sin's dictates. They can deceive you. But now there's a there's a blessing part of emotions when you understand how to control them rather than them controlling you. You see, the blood of Jesus defeated the devil, but it did not defeat our flesh. And we have to control our flesh. We've got to control our emotions. We've got to abide in the flesh, so we've got to we got to learn how to control our emotions. We cannot allow our emotions to be in control of our lives. That cannot happen. If that happens, it's it's going to be a big time problem. And yet, you know, there there are emotions that go after God. Uh, there are emotions, uh, you know, that God has given us to be a blessing to us. We can feel after God. We can. We can enjoy romance uh, once we have uh, uh, decided what's going to govern these emotions. And are those emotions going to lead us to romance or are those emotions going to lead us to a divorce? And, and so it's something that you've got to decide. I mean, pain or pleasure. 
okay remember emotions or feelings on the inside um uh, move by pain or pleasure and so yeah they, they're something and the, the key so what I want to show you today is you cannot let them become the engine to your life. They cannot become the governor of your life. Uh, they can influence your life in a good way, being governed the right way. Uh, but you, 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 you can't be an emotional baby and emotionally immature and just allow your emotions to just absolutely ruin your day, ruin your life, uh, ruin everything. And so, you know, while the God wants to lead us and guide us and even being led by God, depending on God, all those things that we're learning, we still have to confront our emotions every day. And we've got to ask the spirit of God to help us to be in control of our emotions, help the, the Holy Spirit will help us with that. And uh, not only to be in charge of our emotions, but uh, you know, don't allow those emotions, negative emotions to, to ruin our lives. Someone just mentioned something I wrote in a book years ago when I talked about the anatomy of life. And uh, I talked about uh, the eight steps to, to, to change and share that anatomy. And one of the things we talked about is that the influences of life uh, will determine the way you think. And the way you think will determine how you feel. Okay. So if you just look at that, what, what are the influences in your life? Good or bad, right or wrong? What are those influences? Those influences are going to determine how you think, okay? And your thinking is going to determine how you feel. So if you feel bad, go and look at what you're thinking about. And if your thinking's bad, go and look at the influence that caused that thinking. So, you know, who you hang around does matter. What you expose yourself to on a day-to-day -day basis, it absolutely does matter. Because what I expose myself to, um, man, that's going to determine my thinking. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so your thinking is, is important. That's why you're exposing yourself to the word of God. You're exposing yourself to these daily confessions. You're exposing yourself to the presence of God. You're exposing yourself to those things so that that exposure produces Word of God thinking and watch this and that word of God thinking will produce word of God emotions or word of God feelings. And those feelings will will determine your decisions in life. So you're not making emotional decisions. So it really goes back to the, the influences of life. What are you hanging around the most? What are you listening to the most? What are you exposing yourself to the most? Because that is going to determine how you think. And the, the way you think is going to just going to determine your emotions. So if your emotions are all out of whack, uh, then your 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 everything down the line is going to be out of whack. OK, so you can position yourself uh, to a place where emotions are not governing your life. And that's that's the key thing I wanted to get to you today so this weekend uh you're gonna you're gonna be a little bit more emotionally mature and your emotions are not gonna run you you're just not gonna let them run you amen you're not gonna be dominated by your emotions you're gonna be a cool guy i pray this prayer lord i thank you for a spirit of ease a spirit of ease i'm, I'm talking to my emotions, you're going to you're going to be at ease today and that there is nothing that can happen that God can't take care of. I mean, my I had one daughter when she was a baby, she used to draw on the wall walls. I used to just get nuts over the fact that she's drawing on my walls. And then I grew up emotionally and realized you, you got paint. It's not that big of a deal. You can you can wipe it off. You don't have to let your emotions go to a certain place. Let's mature in our emotions.
And that's going to be a big focus that we're going to be looking at on Wednesday nights. Let's mature in our emotions. Praise God. Hey, I love you guys so much. This coming Sunday, we are going to talk about, I mean, it's it's the most important message I've ever preached before in my life. Somebody said, Pastor, you say that all the time. Man, this thing is something else. I'm I'm like, wow. So join me Sunday if you can't make it to the dome. Um, we, We're going to sit in some stuff and it's it's amazing the thing that blew my mind is that here it is all in the scripture it's like it's right there i mean what are you going to do it's right there in the scripture so i'm excited about this we finally going to figure out what does it mean when the bible talks about by the power of god by the power of god what is that what does that look like it's going to be pretty good so join me on sunday as we deal with this very very important teaching i think it will will bless your life amen Uh, well, love you guys. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you later.